A heartbreaking loss for a Lexington family. Police say a boy died after falling into a pond at the Lexington Cemetery. Now the family says something needs to be done to protect others. A good friend, uh, I'm going to be missed. How friends are remembering a woman Lexington police say was murdered and left behind an apartment building. People in a Clark County neighborhood say someone is running an illegal business there. What a WKYT investigation found. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. And good evening. Tonight we're tracking the investigation into a shooting involving state police that happened within the last hour in Scott County. Now, police say that shots were fired during a chase. Investigators say a suspect was shot on Midway Road in Scott County, not far from the Woodford County line. Our Kristen Kennedy has an update now from police. She joins us live with the breaking details. Kristen? Amber, about a quarter mile from where we are right here is where that chase ended. I'm going to step aside and give you an idea of what kind of scene we're looking at, which is not much right now. Deputies did ask us to step back away from that scene, so we really don't have a good view for you right now. I can tell you that Scott County deputies and state troopers are out here investigating. State police are handling this case. They say they were chasing someone in a car. The chase ended here on Midway Road. That person involved in the chase, we're told, ended up running. There was gunfire. State police say they shot the person involved, and right now we do not know the extent of that person's injuries. Troopers at the scene for an ambulance. We are out here. We're waiting for more information from state police. We're watching a lot of drivers try and come down Midway Road. Everyone, though, is having to turn back around. They are not allowed to cross this tape, and neither are we. We're going to stay out here, and we'll try and get some more information for you. For now, we're live in Scott County. Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. Kristen, thank you. Also breaking tonight, family members of a missing northern Kentucky man tell us investigators have confirmed that a body found in Clark County last week is him. Robert Jones' family says that they received word about half an hour ago that the body has been identified. Police say Jones and his girlfriend, Crystal Warner, were murdered last month. They have not found Warner's body. Police have arrested Craig Pennington and charged him with murder in this case. We'll keep you updated on both of those breaking news stories. For the second time in a week, someone fell into a pond at the Lexington Cemetery and drowned. And tonight, family members of the most recent victim are raising questions about the pond's safety. Investigators say that 11 year old DeShannon Davis fell into the pond and drowned last night while fishing with some friends. Today, our Sean Moody talked to the boy's aunt. It's our top story at six. I talked today with DeShannon Davis's aunt Yvette. Yvette told me that DeShannon's mom was worried after that drowning happened out here last weekend. Yvette said DeShannon's mom told him not to come back out here, but Yvette says DeShannon just really wanted to catch one more fish. 11 year old DeShannon Davis's aunt Yvette said he loved the outdoors, especially fishing. Fishing is just something that's in our family to where we take all the children in the family to fish. We teach them all how to fish. So he knew how to fish. He knew how to swim. Yvette said DeShannon had caught fish in this pond at Lexington Cemetery before, but after a man fell in and drowned here last weekend, his mom said no more. She, I just want her to know that it's not her fault. It's nobody's fault. You know what I'm saying? She told him not to go to the cemetery because of the last incident that happened. But being kids, and I've caught, I've caught a frog before, and I've caught a fish before, well, I'm going to go again. He fell in when he and a couple of friends were fishing here last night. Now, there are no fishing signs here at the pond, but Yvette says they want to make it even more secure so that this never happens to another family. At the lake, I'm hoping to get with the, um, the cemetery people, and I actually want to put a fence around the lake to where kids can't go and fish in it. Or if they can go and fish, they won't fall in the lake. The lake will be protected. To we also reached out to Lexington Cemetery's management today. They said they couldn't comment right now. In Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT. The Lexington police said that they talked with cemetery representatives about making repairs to a fence to make that pond more secure and offered any help they could give. Tonight, we're learning more about a woman found dead behind a Lexington apartment building. Police say they're investigating 46 year old Stephanie Mullins' death as a murder. So far, they have not made any arrests. Police found her body yesterday morning off Cross Keys Road. This afternoon, Victor Puente talked to Mullins' roommate. The identity of the woman whose body was found behind this Lexington apartment complex has been released, but so far, there hasn't been an arrest. 
Lexington police were called to this apartment just after 6 Sunday morning when a neighbor heard gunshots. They say when they got there, they found the body of 46-year-old Stephanie Ann Mullins next to a park behind the apartments. Her roommate says he thought something might be wrong when she didn't come home Saturday night. I thought maybe she had maybe stayed over a friend's house, but when I got a call at work saying that they had found her, it like broke my heart. Adams says Mullins was a proud grandmother who loved her children. Police haven't made any arrests. They're looking at the hours before her death to try to find her killer. Last month, Mullins was cited for prostitution, but the case never made it to court. Police are trying to determine if that played a part in her becoming a victim. Anytime anyone, just in general, uh, engages in high risk activity or puts themselves in certain situations uh, that could make them more vulnerable as a victim, uh, you know, you have to take that into consideration as well. We all have our struggles, and, and she was getting over hers. And... Mullins didn't live near the area where her body was found. Police are hoping someone knows how she ended up near that park. I hope uh, whoever did this did. You know, come forth and turn yourself in because it's wrong. You know, you took away a good person. Lexington police are asking that anyone who saw Mullins Saturday or early Sunday morning please give them a call. They say any detail, no matter how trivial it may seem, could help them with this case. In Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. This is the 13th homicide in Lexington this year. Tonight, police in Lexington are still trying to find a driver they say is responsible for a crash that damaged three homes. It happened this morning along Georgetown Street. Police say a man's Jeep jumped the curb, then hit a porch on one home, hit a support beam on a second home, and then knocked a third home off its foundation. Someone living nearby took some pictures of the driver. Once witnesses said that he started to leave the scene, and they say he claimed he didn't have insurance. It explains why he did why he left because he knew he was in trouble. Police say that no one was injured in any of the homes that was damaged. They say the Jeep is not registered to the name of the man who was driving it. Many of us saw plenty of sunshine today, but a few storms brought heavy rain to parts of southeastern Kentucky. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell shows us what he is tracking for us on the Defender Radar Network. And things are beginning to uh, quieten down quite a bit across most of Kentucky at this point. You can see it on one of our many cams that we're looking at. And we are all across the Commonwealth. Frankfort, Florence, Moorhead, just some cloud cover generally showing up, especially to our east. That's where the moisture has been uh, the thickest throughout most of the day. Here's what we've got on our Defender Radar Network. A little thunderstorm activity trying to, again, roll across the border from Virginia into eastern Kentucky. That's it, though. That's the only action you're going to find. And that was the targeted area that we were talking about for today. And look at those showers. Very heavy rain. That will try to work its way tomorrow into parts of central Kentucky. We'll run into very similar showers and thunderstorms. So as we look ahead here with some of our headlines, tropical moisture arrives. It really kicks in tomorrow. It's already in southern and eastern Kentucky today. So that means very humid conditions. And any thunderstorm that goes up will have the potential to bring more heavy rains. And with uh, the ground already saturated, our flash flood concerns are heightened. We'll take a closer look at it and track it in here hour by hour coming up. By law, only residential homes are supposed to be in a Clark County neighborhood. But people who live there say they're tired of looking out their windows and seeing what they claim is a thriving business. Planning and zoning has done everything that they can. But as investigative reporter Miranda Combs tells us, one neighbor tells us that nothing appears to have changed. Mostly, people come to the county attorney's office for answers and understanding about county issues. That's what we were doing in Clark County, but we didn't get answers or understanding. Is Mr. Thomason? We just got the runaround. Can we catch up with you to discuss this Mallard Lane business that's being run out of the residence? Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? We're talking about a residence about two miles away in Winchester. The county attorney claims this property is under investigation, an open investigation, meaning the media can't get to it. So we did our own investigation. It is wrong. In, my, in our opinion, it's very wrong. William Reed lives on Mallard Lane across the street. He claims is a thriving business, Banks Upholstery, something not allowed on his street. It's breaking the law. 
Sure enough, you can't have a business here. This map shows zoning for the street. It's called an R1C zone, meaning residential only. All I can do is, is fight for my rights. You know, we bought a house. We don't want a business being ran across the street from our home, period. An open records request with Winchester Planning and Zoning shows evidence dating back half a year. Snapshots of comings and goings of cushions, chairs, sofas, and more. Planning and zoning told us to take pictures. We were also given copies of violation notices from the city saying shut down the business. And if they didn't, the city was handing the evidence over to the county attorney to start legal proceedings. Planning and zoning says they did that four months ago. The county attorney is where it's stuck at. Reed claims the business is still operating, so we went to see for ourselves. When we first pulled up, there was a bank's upholstery sign propped up out back. The bank's truck is out front, and some rolled up fabric was on the ground. But not much activity. We seem to be one of the few visitors on this particular morning. I'm Miranda Combs, I'm with WKYT. We told him we were there to see if he was running an upholstery business on the property. Some of your neighbors have had some concerns about the business and people coming and going out of here. Also, I have some notices from turn, planning and zoning. It off now. Do you have a comment? Okay. He came back out before we were off his yard. Talk to us for a second, sir. We'd love to hear from your side. But he told us to call the county attorney. It, I did. He says you're under investigation. What do you say about that? He went back inside and we called county attorney Brian Thomas again. I uh, came and talked to Mr. Banks on Mallard Lane this morning and he said to contact you. Thomas told us proving a business is operating out of a residence takes a lot of proof and hard evidence. So what you're saying is these cases are hard to prove? He said he's lost a similar case in the past, but said he is still investigating Banks Upholstery. As for whether this is a business, Reed says the proof is right outside his door. No, it's not fair. Absolutely not. We paid a lot of money for our home. We don't want a business right out the front door every time you go out and look at the house. We don't want to see traffic going and coming. It, Again, no one has been charged in this case. Initially, the neighbors we talked to were concerned about the traffic the alleged business drew. We stopped by a few times and didn't wit witness much activity. However, the pictures we obtained from planning and zoning showed times of trucks parked out in the road, as you all saw. You can see why people could be frustrated. What did planning and zoning have to say? Well, they gave us the documents that were a public record, but they didn't want to say any more than that because now it is in the county attorney's hands. All right. I know you'll keep us posted on this story, Miranda. Thank you. Well, you know, I have some extra time to share your opinions about Governor Bevin's proposed changes to the Kentucky Medicaid program. The reason why, next. New tonight, state leaders have extended the amount of time you have to make comments about the governor's proposal to change Kentucky's Medicaid program. The original comment period ended July 22nd, but after being flooded with comments on that day, the Department of Medicaid Services extended the deadline. You now have until Sunday to make a comment. Under the governor's proposal, Medicaid recipients would pay a monthly premium and there would be co-pays for doctors' visits. Vision and dental coverage would be eliminated, but it could be earned through community service. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Jim Caldwell. For most of us, it stayed on the quiet side today. Showers and thunderstorms were confined only in eastern Kentucky, but some of those were very heavy. Tropical in nature, already showing up around here. And that is going to be a case that continues all week long. Let's check our temperatures and Defender Radar Network where you're going to find some more storms still holding steady along the Kentucky-Virginia state line. The rest of the area not being impacted by that, though. Just some of the clouds that have been streaming in. So that's the only moisture we've had to deal with that and some of the humidity. 85 right now in Lexington, 86 into the Danville area. And notice down in eastern Kentucky in Harlan, 79. There's why the rain and the clouds, all of that kind of coming into that general area, cooling things off considerably. We put it into motion. You can see the clouds, moisture, showers, thunderstorms across Tennessee, and even more to the south. An area of low pressure that will be impacting the forecast for many days to come is sitting there and spinning showers, thunderstorms across Florida and into Georgia, South Carolina, and guess where else? right here into Kentucky and the influence this low is going to have on our forecast over the next few days will get better and better and it just means more in the way of rainfall. Here's what happens with it. The low will start 
tracking backwards. At least that's what a lot of the data is suggesting. It's going to be a slow go with it. And as it does, it spreads that tropical moisture into Kentucky. So when that moisture increases, we get that tropical feel, which is not exactly uh, something that is very comfortable. It's more smothersome than anything else because we're talking dew points, low and mid 70s across a big chunk of Kentucky. And when you get that kind of moisture content in the air, it sets us up for heavy rain potential with just about anything that goes up has the potential to put down a lot of rain. Everything gets calm again for the overnight hours tonight. It'll be on the sticky side, of course, but we get into your Tuesday. That's when we'll ramp up those shower and thunderstorm chances right at noon. Notice it's starting to pick up on some of the shower activity coming together. We go through the day more in the way of showers and thunderstorms. Some of these producing heavy rains at this point as well. We had that earlier today. We could have it again tomorrow. Guess what? We could do it again as we get into your Wednesday with the thunderstorms that develop and start working their way across parts of Kentucky. So a very active week. Now, here is just a rainfall forecast for the entire week. That goes all the way through 11 o'clock on Sunday night. Now, you're seeing these numbers and you're saying, well, we got a lot of time to get that amount of rain. Here's the problem. This just shows us that there's a lot of moisture available out there, and we could see numbers like this probably higher than what we're having out there. So what we run into is the potential for more flash flooding starting really into the day tomorrow and beyond with a daily threat of showers and thunderstorms hanging out. Now, we do back the chances off a little bit. You can see Friday into your Saturday, but we'll ramp them back up uh, before you know it going into uh, Sunday again. But in the immediate future, guys, in between showers and thunderstorms, smother some hot. Heat index values probably climb close to 100 very easily because yeah. it's just going to be so moist out there. Just talking about a lot of tropical mm -hmm. air. All right. Well, it sounds like we're just going to get used to it because we've already been used to it. So we'll just have to <laughs> no choice. go with it. Nothing odd here, right? <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right. well, Brian's back, and it's all about football today, Brian. Yes, we take a look at the LCA Eagles in our high school preview, and it was media day for the EKU Colonels. Also, more on what the departure of Reggie meant means for the football Wildcats. Sports is next. If you missed it earlier, UK defensive tackle Reggie Mint has left the team for personal reasons. Mint was the leading returning tackler on the D-line with 31 tackles, one and a half tackles for loss, and a sack. The Cats, though, say they're moving ahead. I think I think we're gonna be fine. You know, we we got we got guys that are hungry. We got guys that are moving around, and, and um, we're gonna be fine. We're gonna we're gonna compete. Well, I would say on on the field, he was t a technician for us. He was a guy that. Um, you could go in and put him in there, and he, he, he's going to do his job, you know, and he was going to have the ability to be able to lead from that standpoint. So I would think that, that you know, just a, as a technician. It was media day in Richmond for the EKU Colonels. A new head coach, Mark Elder. EKU picked to finish second in the OVC, but no one outside of the program knows what to expect. A new coaching staff, an entirely new system, and 40 new players. Part of fall camp for the Colonels has been getting to know one another. Uh, every day we get paired with a new teammate, and we, we get to break bread with them, get to get to learn a, a little bit more about each other and, and come closer as a team, and that's something that we've been doing all camp. We've got to become a team. We've got to come together this fall camp, and we've got a little less than a month to do so, uh, to take a group, a, a group of men that are talented and make them a talented team. Now to high school football. Ethan Ashley begins his third year as the head coach at LCA. He has a team with a lot of depth and a lot of speed. Lee K. Howard previews the Eagles in tonight's 27 teams in 27 days. Numbers are up and so is the confidence level at Lexington Christian Academy. We've always been short in numbers. We used to be dirty 30 and now we're up towards 55 guys. Not only are there a lot of players, but most have experience playing on a team that reached the regional final last year. And now that we've got a lot of talent, uh, got a lot of pieces back, uh, we've got a few young pieces we're going to have to plug in here and there, but the depth is greater than ever, and uh, I think that's going to be one of the biggest keys for us this year. Running back Dylan Wheatley is back after rushing for more than 2,000 yards and 32 touchdowns a year ago. He could get help in the backfield by another talented rusher, Drayden Burton. You know, this year we're going to see what we can do, try and alleviate some of the load. But at the end of the day, you know, if you're a workhorse, you're a workhorse, and, uh, you know, we're going to do whatever it takes to win. Uh, we have a great team speed this year as we did last year, but I think even more so than last year, we're just stronger and faster. So 
you know, our offense is always the thing that, you know, kind of drags us through games. But I think this year our defense will be a big factor as well. It's a defense that takes pride in its speed as well. We call ourselves the Blue Swarm because uh, we're just trying to get to the ball in numbers uh, and just overrun the offense, give them no chance. We've got quite a bit of uh, senior leadership on the defensive side of the ball, which I think for us, uh, as we go through into the playoffs, you're going to win a lot of games uh, defensively, and that's going to be key for us as we move forward here. For 27 teams in 27 days, I'm Lee K. Howard. That team is going to be a lot of fun to watch. Sam and Amber, back to you. Thank you, Brian. Final check of your first word forecast is next. And then on the CBS Evening News, Delta Airlines is still playing catch up after investigators say a power outage caused hundreds of flight cancellations today. We have an update on some breaking news that we told you about earlier in this newscast. We continue to track a shooting involving state police in Scott County. It happened late this afternoon on Midway Road near the Woodford County line. Police say they shot a suspect during a chase. And they have not said what led up to the shooting, but neighbors are telling us they heard an exchange of gunfire. The suspect's condition is not known right now, and it's believed that no officers were injured. Keep checking WKYT.com and the WKYT News app for updates. All right, Jimmy. We're talking showers, thunderstorms, and a tropical feel uh, around here, which is, is, sounds much better than it really is because it's not going to be wonderful at all. If you're outside for any extended period of time, you're going to notice that uh, it is rather sometimes difficult to breathe in between these showers and storms. And because these showers and thunderstorms can produce heavy amounts of rain as well, guys. So be on the lookout. Yeah, a lot going on. All right, thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you back here at 11.